gospel of Jesus Christ. This gospel of Yeshua. There's some that's perverting the ways of God. And in the name of grace, people have not been touched. The Bible says that preach the word. It says be instant in season, out of season. It says reprove, rebuke, and sure with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine. They don't want to hear sound doctrine. We, we, you know, we, you know, what, what I told you about, you know, he justifies the ungodly. That's awesome because that covers all of us. Because the law, the, 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 the scriptures are clear that both the Gentiles and the Jews that kept the law, they all under sin. The Bible says none are righteous. No, not one. But there's some that want to, they want to keep doing what they want to do. Or even if they change a little bit, they don't hold to the doctrine. You'll have an apostle over here, and he'll say A, B, and C. Then the apostle over here says A, B, and C is not necessary. You'll have two prophets stand up. Prophets that's accurate. I'm not talking about hit and miss prophets. Prophet that will tell you things that nobody else would know. And the prophet will say A, B, and C is okay. And this prophet is just as accurate. Will say A, B, and C is not. How do we know what to follow? This is what we're gonna we're gonna cover tonight. And if you remember the words, it's gonna help you for the rest of your salvation. It's gonna help you for the rest of your life in the body. If you take heed to these principles, turn with me to numbers. Numbers 22. Numbers 22. This is a good example. Numbers 22. We're going to skip through this. Against me. Come now, I pray thee, curse me the people, for they are too many for me. Peradventure I may prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I won't, I know that he which thou hast blessed is blessed and he whom thou cursed is cursed can someone says that he had a reputation amen he was a prophet he had a reputation and this king knew that if he would declare blessing over someone they will be blessed and if he cursed them. They would be cursed. Twenty-eight through fourteen. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again as the Lord shall speak unto thee, and the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And God came unto Balaam and said, What men are these with thee? 
And Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, hath sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. Peradventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Amen. You see here that this man, this prophet, went before the Lord and inquired of the Lord. Although these people wanted to give him money and riches, he said that I'm going to inquire of the Lord. And God told him not to go and read on man of God. And what happened? And Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. Amen. I said, I don't care how much riches that you have came with, I'm not going with you. This prophet on what the word says. Amen. Read on. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak, and said, Balaam refuseth to come with us. And Balak sent yet again princes, more and more honorable than they. Amen. You see this? You see the enemy? Uh-huh. Now the enemy, there's something that's happening twofold here. The Bible says that we need to love truth. The Bible says that there's going to come a time during the end time because they receive not the love of the truth. He will send a strong delusion so that they believe a lie because they didn't want to receive the truth. So here the word of the Lord already came and he told this king what the Lord said and he decides to use politics and he decides to use manipulation to get his own way because he was a man that had a lot. So he sent more honorable men, more riches. For I will promote thee unto very great honor, and I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. Amen. Keep going. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God. What a noble less or more. Amen. What a noble thing to say. Man of God. This man declared that he would not go and he sounded ill. Keep going, man of Jesus. Now therefore I pray you, carry ye also here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. And God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, thou shalt thou do. Amen. So now God gives him permission to go. Can you remember, say that God gave him permission. God gave him permission. Say it again. God gave him permission. Amen. And so the Bible says what? Keep keep reading, man of God. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. Mm-hmm. And God's anger was kindled because he went. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> God just told him to go. But the Bible says that his wrath God's wrath was kindled against Balaam. See, God searches deeper than what we're walking and deeper than our mouth confession. Amen. Sometimes that we're, we're, we're going and we say a certain thing, but God knows the reins of our heart. The Bible says that this heart is desperately wicked, deceitful and desperately wicked, and who knows it? But he searches the reins of the heart. But as long as you stay anchored in Christ that forgave you of all of your sins, the Bible says that when we're connected to the vine, that good fruit will come forth. 
You don't have to worry about this as long as you stay connected to the vine. But let's continue to read on, man of God. And God saying it was killed because he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side, and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself unto the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he smote her again. All right. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place, Lord, Jesus. where there was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled and he smote the ass with a staff. Oh, Jesus. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me. I would there were a sword in my hand, for now will I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, and Am not I thine ass? upon which thou hast written ever since I was thine until this day, was I ever want to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. Amen. And his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. Now him as a prophet, he should have seen the angel of the Lord before this animal He was blinded in the midst of him going. Although he spoke a good speech, God seen deep down into his heart and around. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return unto Balak, and thus thou shalt speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his parable and said, Balak, the king of Moab, have brought me from Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Jacob, and come, defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God hath not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord hath not defied? Far, for from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him, lo, the people shall dwell alone and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Amen. Now you see this man of God, he's in, and we're going through a lot of scripture, but the scriptures, yes. it needs to be in your hearing. Yes. Amen. Because this is something that happened that wasn't light. And it shows a example that we need to be aware of. All right. Because we have a lot of voices that we're hearing. Yes. Yes. A lot of people telling us, and we're looking at them and saying that they mu this must be true because they are a man of God. Listen, some of the most, the best weapons that's used is things that God has ordained, not the devil ordained, but God has ordained this, this person came out of crack cocaine. Go ahead. They were a prostitute, and now they're no longer a prostitute. They're living holy, they're living single, until God gives them whoever he's gonna give them. They've came out of all type of things. They were drug dealers, and, 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 and God, you see the hand of God on their lives, so we say that whatever God's, whatever they're saying, it must be of God. But you have to remember that we're built on the foundation yes. of the apostles and prophets. So although that this person have a mighty, has a mighty testimony, right, right. if he's telling you, if she's telling you something that's not lining up with this word, you're not to follow this. Oh, the best weapon.
weapons that he uses or things that God has ordained. Amen. Did not God put Adam and Eve together? Did he make any mistakes? God makes no mistakes. Should he have maybe, instead of getting dust from over here, maybe if he had got dust from over here, maybe she would have turned out. No. When God made him, it was perfect. Yes. But who messed it up? Yeah. Mankind messed it up. Yeah. Did not the Bible declare and says these twelve have I chosen? Yes. And one of you are the devil. God chose them. It was ordained. But This is what we stand on. This is what we stand on. If he could ever use your spouse, your brother in Christ, your sister, we don't give ourselves over to the enemy. We will provoke each other to love, as the scriptures say. But if the enemy could ever try to find a way he will try to use yes. them that are closest yes. to you yes. Come on. Yes. Come on. Yes. to try yes. and discourage you. Yes. Yes. In the midst of that, you still stand and you still love because yeah. you love them. What? You love them and that love will cover the multitude of sin and that love will restore that person and that love will get. But if you're not careful... When that person told you, hey, let's go out to Rachel's, <laughs> and you yield instead of standing your ground, resisting and still loving, you yield. Because mm. this is a man of brother so and so, and I believe that he got to deliver them from so much, and, and you know, he was on crack cocaine, and so it got to be okay. Got to be okay. It's coming from the man of God. Mm-hmm. That's good. <laughs> Does any man preach any other gospel? Let's keep going, man of God. Go to 16, um, um, verse 23, 16. And the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Go again unto Balak and say thus. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering. And the princes of Moab with him, and Balak said unto him, What hath the Lord spoken? And he took up his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie. Yes. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Mm -hmm. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Amen. What, What is God saying here? I just told you that I declared a blessing over Israel. And I'm not a man that I should lie. And I'm not repenting from what I declared over Israel. And you're coming back to me to try to get me to curse them that have not been cursed. Minister David, walk in this thing. My God tonight. Keep going, man of God. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless. And he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. Now, Now tell me something. He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Neither has he seen. Now listen. These are the same people that murmured wild and did all of this and he had to slay a little bit man. but because of the grace and because God has chosen what it says who shall separate us from the love of God who shall bring anything to the charge of God I know that you're not perfect yet I know that you said something and you should not you shouldn't have said that and, and, and maybe your co-workers or maybe some, a brother or maybe somebody and they, they're trying to point at you. You call yourself a Christian. How could you call? The Bible says that God has not seen it. Why? Because 
as we are walking along this journey, the Bible says that he justified the ungodly back here. Because we're justified by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. But as we walk, we walk and we begin to get into maturity. We begin maturing. And we stop cursing and we stop stealing and we stop. But back here we may still be cursing. But we're justified. Why? Because of the blood. That's right. You got to separate the two. There's some people that's not really born again. There's some people that's not really born again. They learn to come and they conform. And they continue to cuss. And they're not really born again. They're not saved. They continue in their adultery and their fornication. They're continuing their lying and their cheating. The Bible says that no adulterer, no fornicator will enter into the kingdom of heaven. The word does not change for nobody. Yes, if you have sinned in your past, the mercy and the grace of God will forgive you. Look at David. Look at the murder of Moses. Look at Abraham with somebody else trying to fulfill what God said. So we see the mercies and grace of God. But I'm here to declare to you that the grace of God does not call you to lasciviousness. Meaning we do not continue in the ungodly acts of the world. Such were some of us. We were that. But now we are sanctified by the blood of God. The blood of the Lamb. That's it. Some are preaching that it's okay for you to stay in that. And they're preaching a false doctrine. They're preaching a false gospel. This is not what the word of the Lord declares. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, God. Let's keep going, man of God. Let's skip down. Glory to God. To 24. First one? Yes. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel. When he saw that it pleased the Lord, this is the same man of God. Right? Of God, right? Uh -huh. Supposed to be of God. Right. We were declared to be a man of God. Although he had some struggles, yeah. you see him doing what God said. Right. right? So when he sees that it pleases the Lord. He went not as at other times to seek for enchantments. Amen. But he set his face toward the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Balaam lifted up his eyes and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes. And the Spirit of God came upon him. The Spirit of who came upon him? The Spirit of God. God. The Spirit of who? God. A false spirit? God. The Spirit of God. Yeah. Not a false spirit. Right. Not a demon. Right? So we, we've declared now, we know that it wasn't through a false spirit that he was operating. It was the spirit of God came upon this man. And keep going. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, has said, and the man whose eyes are open has said. He has said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel. As the valleys are they spread forth, as gardens by the riverside, as the trees of lime aloes, which the Lord hath planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters. He shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. Amen. Now, this man begins to prophesy. He has the spirit of God comes upon him. As he's standing there, he's having an open vision of what's happening. Later on, if you read down in the verse, the Bible says that even he prophesied about the Messiah that was to come. Amen. You, you, this, this man began to prophesy as the Spirit of God came upon him. And by this time, Balaam, Balak is just hard. He is upset. He's upset. He said, I, I, I see that God does not want you to be prosperous and have riches because you, I brought you here to curse them and you keep blessing these people. 
Second Peter chapter two and fifteen. Man of God. Second Peter two fifteen. Now we just seen these acts that we were, you know, we would consider mighty. This man even prophesied about the coming Messiah. This chapter is dedicated, chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 2 is dedicated to false teachers and false prophets. Read verse 15. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray. Following the way of Balaam. Wait a minute. <laughs> this man that had the spirit of God rest upon him are labeled among the false prophets. Listen. There's the prophet over here that's saying A, B, and C. But and he can see into your life. But this one over here is saying. Z. Which one is lining up with this? See, when a prophet comes and a prophet begins to speak into your life, it opens you up to receive whatever they're saying. Because this this lady just told me, this man just told me things that nobody else knows. He has to be a man of God. But the Bible says, in, it says in the Old Testament, if a prophet comes and shows you a sign, and that sign come to pass, but tells you to follow another God, it says don't listen to that man. Don't listen to that prophet. I'm trying to teach you something that's going to help you for the rest of your life. It's going to help you. It's going to help us. That's what we need. Because we're, we're, we're living in a time where it's just everyone agrees or disagrees. So it's common that everybody's speaking something different when the word says, I would that we all speak the same thing. And so we have people that's teaching stuff that's not in the word. And because they come and they're eloquent and they are on TV and they stand up and they say, God, and, 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 and they, they have Mercedes and Bentleys and, and we look at them as the standard and we forget that the Bible declares that the apostles, the ones that we were set as an example, the Bible says they wandered in sheepskin, they wandered in, in, in caves and in dens. Paul declared that us as the apostles, we seem like we're last, like we're the scum. Look, it says you are wise, but we are fools because they told us not to go out there and preach no more. You're going to use wisdom and not go, you know. And, and, and but we, as a as a Paul saying, we as apostles, we just go out there and we stoned again. So we we'll seem like we're fools. We'll be fools for Christ, and you'll be wise. This is, these are the apostles. These are what the apostles, this is a work of the apostles. They didn't have glamorous lives. The Bible declares that when you, whosoever gives up mother, brethren, sister, houses, and then it says we'll gain many more houses. In this, in this, in this, in this world and then the world to come everlasting life. The many houses that they were gained would not be just because they just got a lot themselves, but because they got brothers and sisters. They got people they have poured into. So yes, my 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 biological mom or, or, or brother is forsake me and, and sister forsake me, but now look how much more he gave. Amen. That's good. The Bible says what persecution. And in what? In the world to come everlasting life. But what do we see? The examples that we try to follow. There's nothing wrong with having. God is going to bless some of you tremendously. But gain is not godliness. Some will teach that gain is godliness, but it says godliness with contentment is great gain. 
For we brought nothing into this world. It says we will carry nothing out. It says with food and clothes there would be content, right? It says them that will be rich fall into a snare. Many hurtful and foolish lusts is drama and perdition. What did the scripture say? It says, O oh man of God, flee these things. But we have people that are teaching that. I don't care. That's not the standard. It's okay. They can have whatever. It doesn't matter. You can have whatever. He gives us richly all things to enjoy. He may bless you with a Bentley, but you still follow. We don't go by. That's not the standard what we see in the limelight. That's not the standard. In Jude, also, chapter 1 is dedicated to false teachers, false prophets. At the beginning of it, it says, Contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. But you go down to verse 11. Guess who's mentioned there again? Balaam. Oh, boy. You know, we're under grace now, you know. We, we, we are under grace, the grace of God is upon us. But turn with me to Revelation chapter chapter 12. No, Revelation chapter 2. There's two churches that we're going to deal with. We're about to close. Revelation chapter 2. Start at 18, because these two did the same thing. Now, what happened to Balaam? Why is he labeled among the false teachers? And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Now let, let's, let, let's stop there. This, by this time, Jezebel was dead. This is thousands of years after so we know that it's speaking about a spiritual Jezebel. Not only is it speaking about a spiritual Jezebel, it's speaking about not only natural fornication and idolatry, but spiritual fornication and idolatry. The Bible says that you suffer this woman Jezebel. Now, I want you to, to, to note something. Here, what's the most, the, what is the greatest commandment that we, we, we have? It's to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second is like it unto it. To love your neighbor as yourself. The Bible says that though you speak with the tongues of men and angels and you have not charity, love, agape, it profits you nothing. Though you understand mysteries, you can break this word down and, and you hear from God, but you don't have this charity, this love, this agape, it profits you nothing. So I'm here to declare it's very important that we allow the love of God to fill our hearts, that we can operate, because we can't do it in our own might. But as we stay connected to the vine, as this tree, this is this tree is is is, is real. This tree is, is is real. But see this? This one here, there's a disconnection. There's a disconnection and it's withered. Look at this one. Look at this one. It's disconnected and it's women. The Bible says it's not by your words, least you should boast, but it's a gift of God. This gift requires you to abide in me and my word abide in you. And you will ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. But if you get disconnected, you don't bear good fruit. You have to stay connected to this body. Amen. And so now we're under grace. And we understand that we need that love to flow 
that only could come through the Messiah, the King. But here, read verse 19 again. I know thy works and charity and service. Listen, listen. Now, in each one of these churches, he said, he told them what he liked about them, and he told them what he didn't like. Now, this word charity is agape. You look it up, it's agape. Wait a minute. They had the agape love of God, but yet they allowed this woman that calls herself this prophetess, this spirit, whether male or female, that called themselves a prophetess. Listen, in this time for you to call yourself a prophetess, you are around the apostles and prophets. So this time, this is the early church. So when you declare it, this is one of the people that, that he didn't miss. This is one of the people that were accurate. But they, what, what happened? What they, they call themselves a prophet. And what happened? To teach and to seduce my servants. To servant. teach and to seduce my servants. My servants. The teaching that they were giving was false. I want you to go, go back up to Revelations 2, same chapter. Revelations 2. Go to um, 12, verse 12. And the angel of the church in Pergamos wrote, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee. Because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. You have people that's holding the doctrine of Balaam. Now Balaam, we know that he, he was dead long before this. But the doctrine of Balaam, see the enemy, he disguises himself and he comes with the same tactics in different forms. He's trying to infiltrate the Old Testament. Yep. He's trying to infiltrate even the church of the living God. But the Bible declares that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. But what is this doctrine of Balaam? What is it? What is the doctrine of Balaam? There's something that we didn't read. If you go to Numbers 31, this is the doctrine of Balaam. This is what they did. It says, it says, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed. See, Israel couldn't be cursed because God declared a blessing. But Israel cursed themselves because God declared that if you do and you keep, it says, blessed will you be in the city, blessed will you be in the field, blessed will you be when you come and you go. But if you don't take heed to the things that I have commanded you, cursed would you be in the city. Amen. And one of the things that were commanded is don't go into the other nations. Yeah. Don't eat at their feasts. Yeah. Don't marry their women. Right. And what Balaam did was very sneaky. Although he declared the word of the Lord, he did something very sneaky because his heart still was not right. If you go to 31, 6 through 8. Read, read that man of God. Chapter 31. 6 through 8. Chapter 31, 6 through 8. And Moses. Numbers. Right? Yes, Numbers 31. And Moses sent them to the war, a thousand of every tribe, them and Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, to the war with the holy instruments and the trumpets to blow in his hand. And they warred against the Midianites, as the Lord commanded Moses, and they slew all the males. And they slew the kings of Midian, beside the rest of them that were slain. Namely, Evi and Rechem and Zer and Hur and Reba, five kings of Midian, Midian. Balaam also, the son of Beor. Wait a minute. We had Balaam at the end of him prophesying. But now we see that Balaam went back and he counseled the king. Look, technically, I can't really, you know, we can't curse him, but. Go ahead and invite them to your feast. The commandment of the Lord was they should not go. Have them to set your finest women beside them. 
And so the doctrine of Balaam, and how do we, how, where is that in this thing? This is the word of God. Paul said, I have exposed you to one husband man that I may present you as a chaste virgin. He was very, very protective of the church, protective of the church. He wanted to make sure that false brethren didn't creep in. He wanted to make sure, and he knew that it would come, because he said, after my departure, grievous wolves will come. And will draw people, draw them to yourself. He will try to draw disciples to themselves. This word is important. But now we have people that's teaching. They're bringing in Muslims. They have teachings. You hear people talk about, we're going to speak to the universe, and the universe is going to, and they're bringing in teachers of Buddha and Hindu and Krishna and they, they're bringing in different teachings and they're mixing mixing it with the gospel of Jesus Christ and they are causing the people of God to be linked up with the world they take the, the, the worldly music they take lyrics of the world and they bring it into the church and now instead of the people of God that have been called out of darkness into this marvelous light meditating on the things of God their mind is going back so when they were with John and when they were with Sue, and you as a man or a woman of God don't have enough discernment and enough care to try to protect the people of God. We can't allow the things of this world. We can't allow the church to commit spiritual fornication. The church commits spiritual fornication with the things of this world. We're bringing in psychology. We esteem the doctrines. We, we have our doctor so and so, and we have our. And what about the the, 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 the baby that, that comes up and he doesn't have the, his doctrine? What about the man, the, the, the man and the woman of God that they. But we're setting before them things, the same standards of the world. We have licenses. We get our license for, you know, for, to drive. And we get our license to, you know, we have, we, we operate legal, so we have to get licensed to that. But we have carried things overboard. Because the scriptures. And so we pattern ourselves after the world. If this man of God stands up, and he sees that you are worthy to be an elder because you meet the qualifications. The, the authority that God has given him, he declares that without any any other interference. It doesn't matter if he was like, I don't care if he was in a home church. The Bible declares and gives him the authority to establish because he's, he's, he's not in an organization but we are a living organism that operates by the will of the Lord so we cannot bring these things the mindsets of the world into the body of Christ and we have done it and we have to shed it off this is the close in my closing Jesus, the chief cornerstone. We can't leave without mentioning again the chief cornerstone. The chief cor Can I mention the chief cornerstone? Amen. 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 Okay. Matthew 7, 21. He said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. For many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils. 
and in thy name done many wonderful works, and I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me that work iniquity. How could we avoid this? There's a way to avoid this. He gives the answer. He doesn't leave us in the dark. But let's cover the ground. It starts at chapter 5 with the Beatitudes. And the people call it the Beatitudes. And he said, blessed are them that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For they. So he begins his teaching by going against everything that we would see as blessed. He begins his teaching by going against the grain. Things that we would not really be happy in. He's declaring that you're blessed. Blessed when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all oh, men are evil against you falsely. It says rejoice, be happy, be exceedingly glad. So he begins his teaching by going against the grave. He said things not now come to destroy the law and the promise but I came to fulfill. Then he goes on and he teaches. You can go through it. Start from chapter 5, go to 6, go to 7, go through it. He teaches about prayer. Because when you pray, you don't be like the hypocrites. They, they like to be the seen. It says they have their reward. Right? It says if you're angry with your brother without a cause, don't do that. It says you'll be in danger of hell. It says if you call your brother a fool, it says don't do that. So look, he teaches us little principles that we need to follow. It says, oh, you know, the, the Pharisee, they, you know, according to the law, you know, if I give my wife a writing of divorcement, you know, I'm, I'm free. Because they wanted to still look holy. So what God did, he took their so-called holiness, the law, and he expounded it to perfection. So all will become guilty. The Bible says that you have heard it's been written. You know, if you, you know, you give a round of the But I say, if you put your wife away without, if it's not for the call of fornication, it says you commit adultery. Not only do you commit adultery, but you cause her. So you that, see the Pharisees, they wanted to see themselves as being the, you know, we're the guides to the people. And we're, you know, we weren't born of fornication or anything. And, you know, technically we can, you know, get the, uh, get a divorce. And I gave her an opinion. But he expounded it so perfect, so perfectly that they were found in sin. And it was pricking their heart. So he opens the scriptures up and he teaches. And all was found guilty. The only way for us to fulfill what the scriptures say beyond, because the Bible says, except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no wise enter. So how do you succeed? It's not by your own words, but as you stay connected. Not only do you treat your wife right, but then it goes deep to where nobody else can see to where you stop lusting. And, 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 and he, he, begins to, he begins to work on things that it's impossible for you to do with just a law. Because I could cover up, I could look real nice and holy to you and be full of mess. Amen. But this God that forgave us over here and justifies us when we, as long as we stay connected, he shows us his love and he shows us his compassion. So it goes through and it teaches about teaches about hypocrisy and teaches about judge not, least she because judge not, but with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And, it, and he goes through and it says it talks about giving and it talks about, but at the end of this, it says this. It says, beware of false prophets. Verse 15, 7 and 15, it says, which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruit. If you stay connected to Jesus, which is our righteousness, our holiness, our justification, you have nothing to worry about. Amen. I don't care if you're not perfect yet. Check me tomorrow. You'll be a look. Check me the next day. The, the Christ will be birthed. You have no choice because he, he loves you. And nothing shall disconnect you from the love. So 
We're talking about the false ones that's not really connected, that turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. So you know them by their fruit because they're not bearing the right fruit. And then he goes and he concludes with this one that we just finished. Many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, have I prophesied in thy name, thy name, cast out devils, thy name, there many one. He says, I will profess it if I never knew you to work. Ye that work in equity, the part of it. Ye that work in equity. Then it gives the answer right after, and this is the last verse. Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and do them, I would liken him unto a wise man that builds his house on a rock. The rains descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell. And it, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Everyone that hear these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man that builds his house on the sand. And the rains descended, the floods came, the winds blew be upon the house. Let me tell you something. Both the wise and the foolish will be able to speak in tongues. Both the wise and the foolish are going to be able to cast out devils. They're going to be able to do many wonderful works. But it says, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, Jesus. Right. Them that do the will. He said, I'm going to tell a group, the part of me that we're going to complete. Then he gives the answer. Therefore, you hear the same thing that do them, you're wise. So, back to the prophet over here. The prophet, both of them very accurate. You don't follow that. The apostle over here, the apostle over here, if they're not lining up with this, you don't follow it. Amen. Amen. And hey, they're kind of slack with what they want to do, and they, and, hey, the Spirit of God, alone. we just we just looked at a man the Spirit of God rested on him, had an open-eyed vision, prophesied about the Messiah. Amen. But he's labeled among the false prophets. Right, that won't be you. Right. Why? Because you're going to be the one that hear these sayings of mine and do them. Right. You're not going to teach against the word. You're going to be of them that preach sound doctrine. You're not only going to be filled with the love charity, but you're also, you're going to guard the flock. You're going to guard the people and make sure that people are not coming and delivering, polluting the word. We have to work together. God has called us to work together in the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank God for you. Thank God, Pastor, for, for, for allowing us to come and, and um, share the word. And um, Jesus is king. Can you all stand upon the feet? I'm going to turn this um, back into the hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put all the people of God come to the altar, please. All God's people.